today is the first session I discuss with my friend Steve Harvey, and we had some sessions before about mindset. But we recently were in Nice and sitting together, talking about his 20 years of experience, really consulting, treating, what do we call it, high level whips from sports industry, from film, from everything, politician, um, what entrepreneurs and billionaires. And with that, what is the difference in thinking with billionaires? And we were talking about ideas, what is inspiration, what we wanted to do with inspiration, get humanity and understand more or believe more that we are all one and that we should be more connected and that we are not should play small. We use it with inspiration always the poem What's your deepest fear? And that's not that you're mediocre. It's more the problem that you are powerful beyond measures. So it's not right to play small. But we are trained from the system to be slaves. Industrial age has really done in this way a bad job. But on the other hand, we had kind of job security. But now the world is so different. And we should live up to our best. That's why we did in the past, we, with inspiration, the purpose work. But I will explain, uh, or you will understand um, during the session with Steve, why I went from millionaire spirit to billionaire spirit, and why we will call the sessions in the future billionaire spirit. Because there is so much to learn from the real powerful billionaire spirit. And if you take Yogananda, um, Mother Teresa and everything, they were in this spirit. And it's not about the ego. It's not just simply about the money. But if you're in the spirit, big money can follow. And I recommend both. Be in the spirit and be on the planet here, on a plane, on planet Earth, of the material level. And we should learn to handle it. And in YouTube, or in my Facebook group, I already have this, be inspired for the game we call life. And understand that the universe is not judging, no moral plus, minus, that's just humans. And negotiate, no. ignoring, ignoring that the universe gives us just the laws. And if you're in spirit, you can use it. You can be in the here and now and make big fortune and solve a lot of problems for humanity. So are you ready for billionaire spirit? Then listen and listen carefully. I guess there's something in you can use. Steve, it's so great to meet again. We had last year some sessions and yeah, partly it was already about mindset and how people have success. Now you're in Calgary, I'm back in Switzerland and we just met in Nice. We're sitting at the beach there and talking and what is really important um, for mindset to have a high quality life and as you consult for now 20 years uh, top guys in the world in every area and just were also there to consult a billionaire we were talking about billionaire spirit and this is uh, the first session here we do on uk health radio um, and i will Title it Ready for Billionaire Spirit. And uh, I want to start with you part of what is the mindset, but also um, how we see the world and how important it is to really get a different mindset, so much bigger uh, than we might have thought in the past what is important. So, Happy that we have the chance to 
create now some ideas and, and connect on uh, again there where we stopped, Denise. Or oh, maybe you like to share something, what you think billionaire spirit is or what we are thinking in between. Yeah, it was lovely to catch up again. And this, um, I sure miss being by the beach, that's for sure. <laughs> There's no beach here in Calgary. Um, but yeah, I think um, one thing I've really noticed with billionaires is that mindset is so different, how they see the world, you know, where other people are so focused on problems. I think um, they're seeing solutions and this, you know, the typical, the visionaries. And I think a lot of that has to do with, um, you know, when I go back to my background in Ayurveda, we look at the different mind body types. And what I found is that most billionaires uh, and highly successful people are pre predominantly vata pitta in the mind body type. And the, the pitta is what gives people that visionary ability. They see opportunities before someone else. And that's the the fire and water element. The vata is what allows people to have creativity. Mm -hmm. And so it's a real combination of the vata and the pitta together where they're able to create, but have the vision uh, to see that, you know, you know, industry disruptors, if you like, uh, creating, you know, new companies and, and technology that never existed before. Um, and so, yeah, I think, um, when you look at, you know, there was a seven or 8 billion people on the planet, but how many billionaires are actually around? It's probably, I don't know, 1% if that, uh -huh. um, uh, you know, and so what really makes them unique? And I think it really comes down to is how they see the world. Um, but I think there's also a, a bunch of common traits is, you know, is how they, how they actually structure their time, structure their day. And that's one thing I notice about being around them is how disciplined that they are when it comes to their daily routines, their daily rituals and things that, that they never miss, no matter where they are, whether they're traveling or not, they still find the time to take care of themselves, both their mental health as well as their physical health. And um, when you say the discipline, that sounds a little bit like, oh, they... As I say, simply say they can punish themselves, or is it just more the flow? Yeah, I think it's really it's, it's more the flow. You know, they would love to have a lazy day, you know, and, and um, but they realize, you know, what would be the cost of that for them if they did. And so they, it's, they always find to, a way to do what needs to be done, mm -hmm. and they won't make any excuses for it because yeah. they yeah. don't. Maybe a big difference, but we anyway said it before. There is a was saying out there: you need to do what you love. You love, and I don't think so. You need to love the result because you need yeah. to do a lot of things. What you're not really loving to do is just if you go to sports, if you want the gold medal, oh, maybe you will have some blisters and everything. You need to train today, even if you're not really interested to do it. But you need to love the result to have the passion for the result. Yeah. Yeah, And also, you know, you mentioned passion. I think that's something that I've noticed with them that they are passionate, but they're also extremely talented in that area mm -hmm. where they're successful. So yeah. it doesn't just come down to passion. You know, they're very talented people as well. Uh, and maybe <laughs> talented in some areas have been absolutely useless in others. <laughs> um, that's but, yeah, yeah. yeah, but then, you know, they've got other people to do that for them which again is them being uh, very uh, great in managing their time, you know. They do. That is um, um, important, but where we can they manage their activities and value their time, but uh, they can't manage time in the end. But yeah, um, <clears throat> what you said is of talent, uh, would you say they are born with a talent or like uh, I heard you, know, you can be talented, but then it's the training, the 10,000 hours or whatever. Yeah. No, I think a lot of them are, you know, weren't born with the talent. A lot of them, you know, really had to overcome adversity and hardship in their, mm -hmm. in their childhood and stuff. 
Um, but it's they they have they have a real thirst for for learning. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my clients I asked him, you know, what advice would you give to your twenty year old self? And they said, learn to learn. Mm -hmm. And once you've learned, uh, learn after you've learned to learn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just continue learning again and again and again. And and so I think that's where the, the talent is developed over years. It's not something they're necessarily born with. Right. Yeah, I can. Uh, I hope so, too, because then I have a chance. Uh, <laughs> what I, what I, I really can agree to is just now, uh, you know, 2008, I published the book Millionaire Spirit. And uh, yeah, I was a millionaire spirit. And uh, I had a time, eight years, what I call beach testing. And now, should I learn something new now? Should the world is changing? Do I really need to learn this all and everything? And there's a really a strong sub personality holding me back. Yeah, you deserve now to retire, but it's mm -hmm. not healthy. The universe is not like this, and yeah. that's part of uh, why I choose this billionaire uh, topic or um, motto because it's hard to learn. If you stay on the same level, if you're not having a higher vision, there's no need to do something. Yeah, <laughs> and the vision can be now: is it money wise? And we will talk what what a, what really is also a billion spirit is not just the money because they're not really going f for money. They have enough. It's something else. But you need to have a higher vision, a bigger vision, to really grow. And and I believe oh we have so much more potential, and 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 they see the solutions they see potential and uh, yeah my business learning are also ready to grow. And most people are is this a system or whatever are just stuck. Yeah, a lot of people are settling as well. Yes. Settling for what they know, as you said, you know, whereas uh, it's about stepping into that unknown and really challenging themselves to grow and evolve. And it's, you know, after all, it's one of the six human needs is to be able to grow and evolve. And um, yeah, I think this is what's is really amazing about them because, you know, from the outside looking in, a lot of people say, well, you know, you've achieved everything. Now what? You're just going to yeah. sit in the beach the rest of your life and look. No, they're more driven than ever because all the materialistic stuff means nothing to them, really. It's almost like it's just a game. It's, it's a, life is a game. We have it here yeah. in YouTube and somewhere else. Just uh, be inspired for the game we call life. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you, you just said something. First of all, I want to just point it out. You said they are strengthening the strengths and the school system is just the opposite, yeah, um, and working on the weaknesses, and it's so stupid, um, yeah. everybody's small. But when you train to be small, and then is this also, when there comes a moment, I can not have the stress. In my beach testing time, um, yeah, partly I could enjoy, and I was learning on seeing the world, but because I had my childhood stress, I had my job stress, before I cut everything down, and when I had the first time in my life, because my childhood was not like this, really what I call so freedom, it was a kind of running away from everything. An escape. And, and I want to get your take on what you said, the six human needs. For me, millionaire spirit and billionaire spirits has a difference also in my book, Basic Millionaire Syrup, the subtitle is with self-responsibility in the financial independence. But I was focusing and everybody is focusing on my human needs, my things. And billionaire spirit is for me, we have totally different problems today. If it's as an individual, you should more think in we, for sure, like Ubuntu, or whatever. Yeah. Also, 
if you don't have a billionaire problem, uh, sorry, billionaire mindset, you can't solve the big problems. Yeah. So it's, it's really a global vision. in a different consciousness. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, most people are looking to make a difference in their family's life or their community's life or even national. But yeah. with billionaires, they're looking at intergalactic. Look at Elon Musk, you know? Yes. Yeah, you know, and so they're really looking at this universal uh, yeah. impact on on the planet or many planets. So my question for the six human needs is: Would you say it's the same six needs just for humanity? Yeah. So then yeah. it's just the shift from me to we. To we. Yeah. Or like, um, there's also, I don't know who brought it out first, as I say, egocentric, no? and then the kind of tribe or family centric, then the world centric, and then the universal centric. Or, uh, so then it's um, consciousness on mindset. Or when we come to the billionaire, what is the difference for you their consciousness and their mindset. I think it all starts with belief in themselves that they're here for a bigger purpose mm -hmm. because they've achieved everything that we would deem as being worthy of achievements and materialistic wealth and success, but at the end of the day, none of that really matters to them yeah. because they've got this calling. It's almost a calling that they're here to change the world. And it sounds for me even a kind of spiritual. Yeah, yeah. And that's one thing as well. I've noticed that most of them have a very deep spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. I'd say 90% of them are very... Um, focused on meditation and spiritual practice. Is and there a difference when we talk billionaires? Uh, there's all kinds of billionaires, and uh, I, see, I see also a lot of unhappy people. But um, is it, with your experiences, is there a difference in also like spiritual practice with those who inherited the money and those who so-called self-made billionaires? The ones that I've worked with have have only been the ones that um, are self-made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so maybe they have a deeper appreciation. Or oh, you, you didn't look at this, but the shake or whatever you... Uh, yeah, those guys, uh, okay, I'm forgetting about that. <laughs> They're on another, another, another level altogether. Um, and yet, even having said that, they, they all still have a deep spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. they, they realize that they're, I think, they're really connected with source. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this is their highest calling is to, you know, change the planet. And um, in order to do that, they need to know themselves. Yes. And, and this is where I think their outer world success is a, direct reflection of the inner world work that they've done and have continued to do on a daily basis. My belief today is also only when you really good connected, then you understand that it's all a game. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, I just talked with someone today who just uh, always in a decision slow and says, okay, can you observe yourself how how you make this slow or this back and forth? Yeah. So now you have the choice. Who are you really? Are you identifying with the slow, fearful, hesitating subpersonality or with the true self? And then you can see thousands of subpersonalities. And then you decide, okay, which one will you want to play? Yeah. And I, that's what I understood with uh, uh, in our talk, and that they're so great, not judging, 
not putting their opinion on that something like Buffett also is just, is just okay what we believe will happen in the future so what is the probability and not no meaning on it yeah and they also have this ability to ask the question of am I, when I'm saying me when they refer to themselves the, a lot of people I think refer to themselves from the ego self mm -hmm. whereas with them they come from what my higher power yeah. doing this situation mm -hmm. you know higher power guide me on is this a good business venture versus that one yeah yeah and the trust that they have in that process is unbelievable yeah trust god the universe and everything yes yeah yeah because it's with their higher power that they're in alignment with oneness you know and um as you say oh. once you get that you realize it's just the game you know yeah. and they have fun with it is it interesting this is the first time when you said trust um I'm just thinking, is it really trust? Because they don't need to trust, really. They know. <laughs> um, yeah. Because they don't make up the fear. Yeah, yeah. When we say fear is a fantasy. They, you need to make it the fear. Because That's danger right. and fear is something totally different. Yeah. yeah. And in this way, we are in God you trust or whatever. No, not even that. Yeah. It's more knowing mm -hmm. that when after my collapse, it says, Oh, before I had knowledge, no, it's just knowing exactly. Yeah. Because when, so, the, when when you need to trust, you're in the duality, mm -hmm. yeah, and and they are, seem so aligned that there is not really the duality, yeah, yeah. So, those that's a lower frequency emotions that we. You know, many of us spend time hovering around on. Yeah. They they just don't entertain that. You know, just like they they never hear the word no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I when I was working in in the hotels for the wellness departments and stuff, and and that was one of the interesting things that I observed with them. You know, they never had the word no that that couldn't happen. You know, mm -hmm. and I I think that's where uh, Ritz Carlton came up with the. They have a saying in the back room of all the hotels is the answer is yes. Now, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> so they they just don't hear, no, it can't be done. Another mm. interesting observation I had recently with a client, um, he was looking at purchasing two properties and we were testing to see which one would be, you know, most suitable for his family and whatever. But one was going to be available in two years time after renovating the property the other one was moving ready and i said well how do you feel about having to wait for the other one and he looked at me and he said wait like it was just known as vocabulary yeah. wait he said, i don't wait <laughs> yeah again i thought wow that's another little thing that is so different from most people you know, we'd be going, oh, the pros and cons, having to wait around and whatever. And it's like, yes, no. and that's the interesting part <laughs> I experience now. So you get, oh, you need to be in the here and now and everything. Um, and it is somehow stupid. You're always there. You're always there, I'll yeah. be somewhere else. <laughs> but you, if you think I wait, then you create a so-called future which not exists. Right. Yeah. And, and and that is, it is the, the kind of waiting with unpatient or I'm a victim or whatever, or someone else is in charge. Or, but it can't exist if you're really in the here and now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's already great. Um, what billionaire spirit really, really means. And I, I want to share something also. Uh, what was triggering me, 2008, my book Millionaire Spirit comes out. And what happened? Financial crisis. But this was, I think, um, really, really different that I talked recently, you know, the last what, two weeks about it with other people. And they said, yes, it's true. That day, 
I can speak from a German standpoint, uh, a European standpoint. That time, oh, the banks were in danger, and our government, or let's say Europe, made a kind of what a rescue, what do you call it, umbrella or whatever in English, and it was four hundred billion. Two thousand eight, and every, wow, four hundred billions. It was the first time the billion came up. So f nobody was thinking, and it weeks later we went up to seven hundred billion. We sort of realized four hundred is not enough. Seven hundred billion. So bah bah bah, and the discussion how we can ever pay it back. Is there any way crazy? Did you ever had a government who says we like to pay back the debt? No, there's <laughs> anyway just a stupid question, um, but that was just everybody was overwhelmed with the word billion, and today we are so used to it, and 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 wasting billions. Oh, you can see our oh, government in Germany there, I still feel like it uh, because I'm born there, even if I 25 years not living there. Um, but Paul. Oh, we need to make this extra or whatever budget and depth and always. It's incredible. And there is one thing that we need to get used. And in the millionaire spirit, I wrote also, at that time, the million was nothing. You couldn't live on it. And look at today, if you would just get interest rate, you can't survive on, on it. It was maybe in the 50s, wow, we are a millionaire and it was great. But in that time, I already wrote, if inflation kills a billion or the buying power of the million, but you want to keep emotionally the distance to the million, then you only have the way in, the, in poorness. Because the millions is coming to you. The buying power of the million is coming to you. I know we have also in the middle class is gone. We have more and more people, but we still watch TV who becomes a millionaire. And that why I also say, wow, we have no governments. They don't have billionaire spirit. They have no clue with the numbers. They just gamble with the numbers. Uh, and it's not like you are billionaires or I'm Buffett or whatever. They can play the game. Yeah, and they, that they can be neutral to the numbers. But yeah. if you have people who are not have the mindset, the consciousness of billionaire, they can only waste the money and, and make it more miserable. You're saying, you know, the billion dollars is really being devalued to what it was worth, you know, 2008, for example. Um, and so that's changed, but society hasn't. Yes. Because that's still the go-to point. You yes. Know, that, yeah. And so they've not moved with inflation. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. And that's why I decided also a lot of reasons, but what you said with the here and now, the, the mindset, the game. It's a lot of things from the individual point that says, well, we should have a billionaire mindset. But if we look at the also then the global problems, started with the bank problems of the climate or whatever we have wars everything we need to go in a totally different mindset consciousness spirit that we can handle those big problems or not just handle it even make the world a better place yeah yeah yeah, and that, that that's that shift that needs to take place within. Yes, you know, and um, how do we get there? How do we make that shift? And yeah. I think that's what I say is it it takes uh, practice. It's daily work that they do on themselves, um, and you know they're prepared to do it, whereas a lot of people are not. You know, but they're prepared to do that inner work. Yeah, and, and you say they're they're so focused on the results and um whereas you know 
I think the mistake a lot of people make is we want to have it all figured out, first of all. We want to make sure that it's going to work. You know? <laughs> yeah. Whereas they, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. they will take risks and, and, yeah, and it doesn't all, work out oh, next. Buffett said, uh, why are you talking about risks? If your three-year-old is driving you to your office, maybe that is risky. <laughs> but if you learn to drive, where is the risk? Um, yeah. And that is what we really yeah, need to have a different awareness of all this and of called judgment or whatever. We need to get out of ideology because that means always war um, and uh, yeah not seeking for the truth. Uh, it's so, so important, um, this billionaire spirit, that we can handle all the problems on pl planet Earth. Yeah. You said the, the people are not there. Um, and yes, there's so much framing from the system, like uh, we saw it in COVID, how million, billions of people could just because some politician decided something, and now we in Germany we have um, yeah, proof that we had a, an institute was checking and, and this is warning or not. What we always related to is as we like the health checker, <laughs> yeah, yeah, checker on health, and 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 then we had to believe they say it's dangerous, but now the protocols came out finally. Someone went to court and took a while, then they got the blackened, and now, now the real papers are there. No, the health checker always said, no, it's not that dangerous. Um, it was just a political decision. Yeah. And amazingly how fast the slaves, yes. Uh, so millionaire spirit, it's it's not really helping anymore. Billionaire spirit is um, yeah, necessary to be not the victim anymore. Then that's what I see with the billionaires or even like um, we mentioned uh, Elon Musk. And he was in, in, in New York sitting in an interview and now with, uh, um, yeah, with his X, X, Twitter X um, and uh, Apple withdraw from advertising and then he says, okay, they want to blackmail him because less money. And he was on stage and saying, you want to blackmail with money? Fuck it. Yeah, because <laughs> all his life, like you said, money is not the main thing for them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and there we need to go because the, everybody is blackmailing us. Yeah. The politicians in, in the German parliament says, if you not vote for what we want, the next time you're not on the list. And now everybody is voting, even the most stupid stuff, just to be on the list, afraid not to have the job anymore. Exactly. And everywhere we, we created the fear. We just had it. The billionaire, I don't go in this fantasy. Yeah. Yeah. I trust the process. And we see all those who violating the laws sooner or later running against the wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also you see that the fall from grace, those who are identifying with, you know, the end goal is the money uh, or the materialistic stuff. What happens when that's taken away? Yeah. You know, you see and the difference with, you know, in third world countries when there's a natural disaster or it, and versus, you know, Malibu with the, the, the fires, right? And you see the pe people in the third world country, their, their shack is destroyed in a tornado to just get back up and go again. You know, then you look at the person being interviewed in Malibu and they're absolutely devastated because yeah. their whole sense of worth was the materialistic stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, that's another thing with the with the billionaires that means nothing to them <laughs> and that's why I always, and they know that they can create it again yes because the source is yeah. yes yeah. yeah yeah having a million doesn't make you a millionaire no you can be a millionaire without the million 
Right. The B is because then you have the creativity. Like I, in the Millionaire Spirit book, I had this. Um, uh, De Martini was it uh, having yeah. lunch with a billionaire, and in a two hours lunch, a billionaire dropped fifteen ideas how to make a million. Right. Uh, and then when I did the millionaire seminars, everyone. Oh. So what is so special if you're a billionaire? A million is one thousand. Yeah, yeah, billionaire means one thousand millions. So to have an idea for so little one thousand, it doesn't matter. It's just the consciousness. Yeah. So we we will say the million is not helping you. You need to go to a different level and and have this as a game we live today. Yeah. And it's not about the money. And that's why a lot of people get it wrong because they're still stuck in all yeah. that. I just today talked with someone who has a company who uh, what is it called AI company doing things and he says also everything is so much faster today and like even Buffett says from the value investing um, when he started life was totally different if you have a farm or whatever you could be better off if you increased it to 10% but today 10% is nothing if you have just a good idea you make thousand folds and and a lot of people, I guess, also in in America, Canada, um, yeah, complaining that the CEO is getting so much money, and the normal worker, nah, nothing. In Germany, we say, oh, it was once twenty times, and now it's four hundred times, or whatever. But they don't see that till around nineteen seventy, productivity was depending on humans. They could work better and everything. So that, there was a relation. But today, productivity is not depending on so much on the people, yeah. but on the CEO, on the billionaire spirit, who can increase the results in a company with their creativity. And that's partly really fair if they get multi-millions. Yeah. 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 And so that's where I think there needs to be a paradigm shift on what role each individual is playing. You know, who are we being, as you said? Yeah. You know, um, you know when you look at the billionaire, who are they being? But we're being so focused on the doing. Yeah. And I think now more than ever, we have to go within. Yes. And do that inner work. And then their outer world will be a reflection of that. Yeah, um, but most people don't know how to be. <laughs> yes, they are programmed, and uh, yeah. and because they're not really thinking what they talk, what they think, and if they would really understand that every thought, every word is a programming, you could be a little bit more careful. Yeah. Um, but there's also something what I with the AI today, just after the talk also with the, the guy of the AI company said, wow, um, in English, it's employee and self-employed. And in German, the self-employed is kind of self-ongoing and I, always because he needs to do it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I was, when I was self-employed, uh, even if I had employees, but I was still self-employed because I was sitting on the weekend making bookkeeping and everything. I did it all myself. Yeah. All the time. And this will be so much more because all these, a um, lot of employees will lose the job, but the self-employed also. Yeah. Yeah, because the artificial intelligence is taking over. And if you still believe, oh, in the last 10 years it was great, don't believe in the next year it will be great because it can go so fast. Yeah. So fast. If you are then not aligned with the principles, how universe works, 
then you will lose. And I think, again, that's coming back to what makes them different, is that they are aligned with the universal principles. And so it doesn't matter what the technology is that's out there. It's, it starts with who, who are they being and are they in alignment with that? Uh, and that's that knowing, again, uh, coming back to that. Um, whereas most people are still running in the old model, mm -hmm. doing the same thing that's always been done. Yeah. You know, I just finished watching the Euros. Um, and uh, I was looking at the Spanish team and I was comparing them to the my team in Scotland. <laughs> uh -huh. And I realized that, you know, one of the problems with the, the game in Scotland is most of the clubs in Scotland are employing former players as the coaches. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing new. They're not growing and evolving. They're just repeating what that guy knows. And he yeah. can only teach them what he knows. Mm -hmm. Whereas what they need is an influx of coaches from Spain <laughs> yeah, yeah. who see the whole game in a whole different level. Yeah. And and I think, that, you know, just looking at that analogy, it, that's the same all over the world in every every walk of life. Yes. yes. We just keep following what was done before, whereas no, we need to have these game changers, these industry disruptors, yeah. you know, the Airbnbs, the Spotify's and stuff like that. You know, the, the old world model, that's gone. Now we need to create something that hasn't even been thought of before. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's that's one of the things that really sets them apart. And they have that ability to do that. And I think here's an interesting point also when I was realizing that 10 years ago or whatever, or even a little bit more, I already said the politicians have nothing really to say. There are companies, entrepreneurs who are really running the show. Yeah. But at that time, I was more thinking about the money that they can whatever, play with them like puppets on the string. But today I see it also, like you said, different, even on a different level, or call it higher level, because if you talk about the club, it's the old same thing. They are not ready to disrupt the system. Yeah. Like we talked, the billionaire is aligned with universal laws. And therefore, he can always do the tension. I, I don't know, but could you agree that the billionaires are not so afraid or underdogs against the government? It's more the opposite. And they don't yeah. care. We have the whole globe. We go and just like Elon Musk says, okay, we can even leave the planet. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It's like they say, we don't operate with man-made laws, we operate with universal laws. Yes, yeah. So there's no restriction to them. Again, yeah. they never hear no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just yes. doesn't exist. Yes, yeah. And our government is mainly working with no. You are not allowed to do this. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we're not moving or just going down, because that's, I heard it, uh, I don't know, when, when years ago, that the uh, universe is not really uh, plateauing. Yeah, You go down or you go up. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we have in German, say if, if you're resting, you're rusting. <laughs> you're getting <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. Rest, get a resting or just. <clears throat> That's why I am decided also to be young again. Because I felt it really when I was in my penthouse in Gibraltar. It took me, I, I guess, one and a half years to get here, my brain really working again. Um, and now you saw the whole system. It's... And that's interesting, you know, because again, that's another belief that we have that we have to sell for. And, yeah. you know, I remember. Uh, Deepak Chopra sharing a story of a study that was done and it was like a, a care facility, an old folks home or whatever. And so what they did was that they, they changed the decor of inside the old folks home. 
mm -hmm. to the same furniture and, and stuff from the 60s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they played movies or TV shows from the 60s and music from the 60s and mm -hmm. they dressed the same. And when they measured all their biological markers of aging, they had all reversed. Yeah. And then they, re they put it back again to, I think it was in the 80s, a study was done. They put it back again and the biological markers of aging were right back again. Yeah. And so, yeah, I think, you know, there's, it's like, who do, who do we want to be right now? Yes. And, and what if there was no limitations? There are no. The only limitation is in here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but when you tell most people that I'm going to start to reverse my age, they, they think you've lost your marbles. <laughs> yeah. No, that I had already uh, when I was 45 and uh, getting rid of my nice building in Hamburg, the f super facade, the floor office, tax office, and so on. And you have five floors in the fine wow. address. How you can give that? You only can be midlife crisis or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and today and i just talked recently with someone who had also a big uh yeah big hustle with employees and big business and and he really had a kind of feeling is dying getting rid of him he needed to uh, get kind of bankrupt if you not change something yeah but today we have not a clue how rich money wise how rich we can be without an office, like yeah. Airbnb you mentioned and everything. Yeah. No, the world is so different today. Yeah. Education is still for the slaves, the industrial age. Yeah. 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 But I think there's hope because, you know, a lot of the younger folks that I uh, bump into from time to time, <laughs> um, they're really shifting how they say it. they're really saying you know i don't want to take a job and and work for 40 years 40 hours a week and being stuck in one location yeah they're really a, a, you know, embracing this ability to work location free whatever they want yeah. whenever they want and with whom they want yeah and for as long as they want and so there's more and more doing that and and they're all doing that with you know a mobile phone <laughs> you know? The computer is not a phone, actually. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So it's. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see. You know, the the kids that are just coming out now, you know, the twenty year olds and stuff, how they're going to shape the world because they're they're no longer participating in that old game. Yeah, we always. Uh, did this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just uh, the the question, and the, the the main difference is maybe that we elderly people now need to learn from the young. That was not so in the past, but right. that the the youngers always try to find a new way or do something that is in the genes somehow, and that they should fight the old lion or just um, make. Them, are you still strong enough or never? Um, so that is nature, that is totally okay. But this big disruptive thing, um, now nearly every day. Yeah. yeah. We had it in, in the past also, someone invented fire, someone or they discovered that wheel, <laughs> wheel and, and so on. And then we could suddenly create a book and, and so on. But then 400 years, nothing. Then the steam machine and so on. Um, so everything was stressy for people at that time, but we could adjust. But now, what I experienced in my lifetime already, in our lifetime, more. We had no TV, you know. We yeah. had a thing like that here. Yeah, yeah. It's so incredible of flying to the moon to now. Mars is the next thing. Rocket comes back, and and like Bob Proctor always said, the iPhone well, existed two thousand years ago. There's nothing here in and with it what was not there two thousand years ago. It just needed someone to have the idea to build it. Right, the visionary. 
Yes, and and so it's really, really interesting what will happen in the next 10, 20, 40 years. And ideally, we get more billionaire spirit being aligned, seeing the big possibilities and then create a totally different quality of life because there's no lack of food, no lack of money, nothing. But... I just recently in the news, he said, oh, gosh, now they calculate what is 2050 or whatever, 10 billion people. How can we feed them? They're stupid. Yeah. Uh, on the duality level for a problem is a solution. But what what I see in America or whatever in Germany or I went through, I ate more than I need. And I just try to get back to what my body needs not what is on the menu and the portions getting bigger and how train we people put some whatever poison in that they want more ships and more ships and more ships, even if it's not healthy. Gosh, we easily uh, feed 10 billion people. Yeah. It's not a problem. It's just everything is here like the old player trains the old system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just just last month, I was on a, a course. It was a Tony Robbins course, and it was all done online. They had 900,000 people on mm. that Zoom call. Yeah. Now, can you imagine that 20 years ago? Yeah. And it's like, it's mind-boggling. Yeah. But again, you know, the next one will probably be a couple of billion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so... There is no limit. That is the thing to yes. what we can achieve. Yes. You know, it's, it's, we do it ourselves. We put the limits on ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And that's why we are so happy because it's uh, not only talking about it, we are training ourselves, uh, getting the mindset. It was always the best if you want to learn something, train it also, teach it also. And yeah. um, because when we talk about it, we are just directly programming us. That's and right. we have an agreement that we will do in the future um, a short three day or whatever, four days, we are, whatever we can invent as well. There's no limits. Um, and I call it, even if maybe it doesn't sound so nice, crash course, cut through the crap and the direct <laughs> pass from purpose. CCC. Cut through the crap. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> exactly. And then to billionaire spirit or even to a billion dollar business because it is really in our mind. It's just not the problem on planet Earth. Because, and that's why I want to also uh, just uh, point it out again, it's not just about the money. But if you solve a problem, a billion dollar problem for humanity, then it's normal that you become a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah? And if you don't like the money, you can always donate it or whatever. But That's get true. the mindset. Get the mindset and see that we have more, more, more people who dare to take on a billion dollar problem. Because a lot of governments are more creating it than solving it. Correct. Because they don't have in the government the billionaire spirit. Steve, thank you for this talk, for this warm up, for As always. the first yeah. session of Be Ready for Billionaire Spirit. And uh, I guess we covered uh, some uh, interesting topics um, that, um, because we know when we talk about billionaire mindset, billionaire spirit a lot of people say oh gosh but bob said always they don't get it but let's work on it and uh, really use it that people more understand it and looking forward um yeah. wonderful the month <laughs> uh, exactly on this topic um and uh, i wish you a wonderful day or rest. likewise you have yeah. a day for me it's just evening here with the uh a lot of our time difference to Canada and Switzerland. Enjoy life and play the game. Exactly.